why do you think health is so important for us today? We are living in very interesting times and disease is increasing exponentially in the world. We have to deal with diseases that never occurred in the past. For example, zoonotic diseases. Mm -hmm. Zoonotic diseases are diseases that come from animals to other animals and to human beings. Now in the past, these diseases were species-specific. For example, bird's flu was bird flu. And it's called bird's flu because birds got it. <laughs> swine flu was swine flu. Uh, foot and mouth disease was foot and mouth disease. Animals with cloven hooves got it. Today, all of these diseases, all of these viral infections have become zoonotic. They have jumped the species barrier. And uh, as the, uh, the viruses change and mutate, they become more and more virulent. So a few years ago, the first about 10 years ago, they, they started jumping to humans. And so humans got the effects mm -hmm. of foot and mouth disease. How it wasn't fatal. Swine flu became much worse and many people have died from swine flu, bird flu, the H1N1 viruses. So what does one do against these diseases? Well, uh, viruses don't respond to antibiotics, but they induce terrible secondary diseases like pneumonia and uh, issues such as that. And, and that is when you need antibiotics in order to solve those problems. And these, these uh, bacteria are becoming uh, resistant to the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So we're living in an, an environment where diseases are increasing, but the medication to deal with them are no longer doing what they're supposed to be doing. So what is the best way to fortify yourself against diseases? And that's lifestyle. You have to give your immune system the best possible capacity to deal with these diseases. And some of the natural remedies that we have uh, are sometimes even more effective than, than uh, the medications that you can buy because they've become ineffective. We did experiments when I was still at the university where we compared the effectiveness of various antibiotics, for example, as opposed to natural extracts from garlic, and particularly wild garlic. And in many cases, the wild garlic was more effective than the antibiotics. And you could see this in the, in the ring of effectiveness in the, in the Petri dishes. So, yes, natural medications that you can take, but your best defense is a strong immune system. And a vegetarian diet without any animal products has been proven to be the best immune booster that there is. For example, we did experiments with um, vervet monkeys where we compared the effectiveness of the immune systems when they were exposed to diets which were totally vegetarian or if they had, let's say, casein in it, which is a milk protein. And the differences were just absolutely phenomenal. So the best immune system, the best capacity to deal with these issues would be a healthy lifestyle. Did God have something to say about this? Did He give us a message? Well, the Bible, if you read the Bible, it tells you exactly what the original diet of man was. I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every fruit with tree on it, well, every tree with fruit on it, and it shall be yours for food. So in other words, fruits, grains, nuts, seeds, those were the diets that were supposed to be uh, designed for humanity. And then, uh, if you go a little bit further, after the deterioration of the sin came into the world, the Bible says that vegetables were added to the diet. 
like I gave you the fruits and these things, I now give you the plants of the field. Now, what do vegetables contain? Well, vegetables are very rich in phytochemicals. They contain many antioxidants. Uh, these are substances that break down uh, ag aggressive compounds that develop in the body through normal meta metabolic processes. And uh, the more of these that you get into your diet, the better. So if you have a lot of green foods, a lot of yellow foods, then you can be sure that you are getting a lot of antioxidants. And if you go through the lists of the various um, plants that, that have antioxidants, you'll see that fruits, particularly berries and, and uh, fruits like plums and grapes and all of these, each one has a different set of phytochemicals. If you go to the vegetable world, the cruciferous vegetables, which is your, your cabbage family, mm -hmm. are incredibly rich in the, in the sulfur-containing phytochemicals, uh, which fight disease and help the body to have a strong immune system. So, if you include fruits, grains, nuts, seeds, vegetables of different varieties, then you get a whole spectrum of these chemicals into your body. And each one is different. Uh, if you take, for example, a tomato, it contains phytochemicals that will protect against prostate cancer, for example. So men should be eating a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> also, when it, when it is concentrated, like when it's cooked, it doesn't lose its veracity, it actually improves. So, uh, the cabbage family is a very powerful anti-cancer fighting component. And then uh, young shoots, like sprouts from alfalfa, those are very rich in, in those phytochemicals. Soy is very rich. And people today have such a campaign against soya because they say it contains estrogens. Now, it doesn't actually contain estrogens. It contains phytoestrogens. They're similar to estrogens. But phytoestrogens target the receptors which would normally be uh, binding to estrogen. And by preventing the binding of estrogen, they prevent the secondary effects of too much estrogen, which is carcinogenic. So actually phytochemicals protect against cancer and they don't have any feminizing effect whatsoever. For example, the Chinese are the nation that consume the most tofu in the world. And uh, there's no effeminization <laughs> that is taking place as a consequence. So it's a, it's a misunderstanding. So soy is a very good food. Uh, one, trouble, one problem perhaps with soy is that it contains a thyroid suppressant. So that if you have thyroid problems, you should reduce the amount that you take. But then most foods contain thyroid suppressants. All grains contain them. Uh, many of the components that people think uh, you know, are, are supposed to be bad actually are good. Like phytic acid, for example, which you find in grain. Mm -hmm. So they say, no, well, phytic acid um, suppresses the digestive process. And later on, when you do a little bit more research, then you find out that this is actually not a very negative effect at all. You do not have to digest 100% of everything that you are eating in order to get every single thing out of there. The fact that there is a suppressant in it means that some undigested material gets through to your colon. Now your colon is, is, is your source where the bacteria do a lot of work and uh, they are absolutely essential in maintaining the health of your intestine and your whole system. And this is where the bacterial, uh, the symbiotic bacteria thrive in that environment. Well, they need something to eat too, you know. 
So when this undigested material comes through, they are able, because they have the capacity to deal with the suppressants, able to get the nutrients that they require. So it's actually a system that assists the whole body to get nutrition. And we often focus on one aspect and, and then misapply the science and the knowledge that we have and say, because this is a suppressant, it must be bad for you. No, it might be good for you. Uh, we have one last question for you. There are so many people, even though they have a good diet, um, apparently a good lifestyle, they still get a disease, maybe cancer, heart problems or other uh, health problems. Yeah. Why is that? Well, people have different genetic makeups, so that is a very big factor. If you have a tendency in your family for a particular disease, then you have to take more care of your situation. For example, if you have breast cancer running in the family, then it would be good to avoid dairy products in particular, and all animal products. But there are many factors which affect health. It's uh, exercise, it's uh, sunshine, it's good water, and uh, trusting God, and all of these issues also play a role. Stress in the times that we are living in is one of the greatest killers. Mm -hmm. Stress alone can induce cancer. Stress alone can uh, induce cardiovascular events, neural events, and uh, we have to take time to meditate upon God's Word and get that peace in the heart that you can only get from God's Word. So if even the world thinks that uh, <laughs> relaxation and meditation is important, how much more so for someone who knows that God cares for us and wants us to be healthy? Yes. Thank you very much.